Good morning, everybody. Greetings, warm welcome. Good to see you today and also to everybody who is tuned in online and watching us in that way. And it's uh, great to have you with us, full marks, for making it and for being here. Uh, Let me just do announcements before we start. There's not very much that I have to say, really, I think. Everything's pretty much... um, Fairly obvious. Just to say, if you're not receiving regularly our little parish update, so we're trying to just avoid handing uh, paperwork out at the door as much as we can, but we are producing a weekly sheet, and um, if you would like to get that and you're not getting it, then let me know because I can email it to you, I can send it to you by WhatsApp, or uh, I can put it in the post, you know, if you want to get it that way, or I can get a pigeon to carry it to you, or whatever you want. We'll work something out. But if you're not getting the weekly update, then let me know, and we'll find a way of getting that to you. So you know what is coming up. Um, So I think everything's fairly straightforward. Just to emphasize um, that uh, our morning service, all being well, will continue, 12 uh, each Sunday. We are hoping to celebrate harvest, and that'll be at the beginning of October. So the first Sunday in October, which I think is the 4th, we'll have a harvest celebration. Uh, We're not going to do a Friday night harvest service this year um, because the whole fun of that is having the cup of tea afterwards and inviting friends and people from different parishes and so on to come in, and that's not really something we can do at the moment. But we will still mark harvest, but it'll be in our morning service uh, on that Sunday, the 4th of October. So in the next week or two, I'll come back to you with uh, some plans about that. Okay, I think we'll get started officially. The Lord be with you. Let me pray the collect for this Sunday. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as you remain seated, we're going to listen to the first song, which is Bless the Lord, O My Soul. And the words will also come up on the screen, just if it helps you to see them and follow them. Sorry if they're a bit small. Oh, you're going to do it, Benjamin. Great. Well done. We're, we're building a great team here on the technology side of things. Track number one. Oh 
going to uh, confess our sins, so we're going to use prayer of confession, which will also come up on the screen, and uh, uh, if you want to follow it in the prayer book, then it's page 102. So let's take the opportunity to acknowledge our sins before God. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to say uh, part of a psalm, which is Psalm 103 uh, this morning. And uh, you can find that again. It's in the prayer book on page 709 if you want to get it there. But it'll also come up uh, in front of us on the screen. So it's Psalm 103. We're going to read just from verse 8 to 13. And I would suggest we just remain seated so that you can see the screen better. So let's think about these wonderful words about God's grace and mercy. The Lord is full. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Well, again, a welcome to everybody, and a welcome to those who have tuned in. There's nearly 50 people watching online, and you're all very, very welcome to be with us uh, today. And don't forget, you can share and like the broadcast. Now, a quick quiz, because our reading this morning has something to do with with money and with currency and with debt and things like that. So can you put up the picture there, please, uh, guys? Well done. And uh, for those at home, I'm going to show. Uh, so on the screen here in church, there's a picture of some currency, and there's various different notes. And uh, I wonder which you think are the most valuable, and can you work out what countries they're from? So the first one, which is in the top left, anybody got the country for that? It's America, yeah, it's a one dollar, okay? In the top right, there's one of those, okay? Belong from our neighbors, okay, 20 pounds, sterling. There's also, I think, somewhere on there, oh yes, there's a strange little one like that. Um, any guesses of what country? Do you see, it's the one in the middle, on the left, up on the screen. What do you think? Any goes at that? Go on then. 
is from Japan. That's, so it's 1,000 yen. There's another uh, strange looking one. That is from Sweden, 50 Swedish kronor. And there's another 1,000. Okay, anyone got the country? If you've got very, very good eyes, you'll be able to see it because it's printed on there. It says Central Bank of, but maybe you'll guess. Yeah, go on, you're very clever, guys. Who said it? Oh, Nigeria, well done, yeah. So that's, I brought that home fairly recently. Some of them were years ago. And this one here is definitely years ago. This one here is, it says on it, 100,000 lei. 100,000 lei. Uh, that sounds, looks like a very valuable note, doesn't it? If you had a note that was worth 100,000 euros, you'd be pretty happy, wouldn't you? You'd look after it. Okay. But I'm afraid that's worth about two euros. It's worth about two euros. It's from Romania. Now, they've taken some of the zeros off more recently, uh, but two euros. What do you reckon is the most valuable of all those banknotes? What would you say? Is it the dollar? Is it the 20 pounds? Is it the 1,000 yen? Any guesses? What do you think, Benji? 20 pounds. That's a good guess. That's the second most valuable one that's there. Um, the, uh, the 500 kroner. That's actually the most valuable. That's worth nearly 50 euros. Okay? So, uh, and I'm afraid the, the others are not worth very much. I think the 1,000 yen is worth about 8 euros, something like that. Now, why did I come and, and wave all this cash around? Okay, well, because our reading has to do with, uh, with money and a debt that was owed and a debt that was paid or forgiven. So we're going to read now from Matthew chapter 18, beginning at verse 21, and here's what it says. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the reading this morning is about forgiveness. Um, again, really, it continues the theme from last week, which was about relationships and how we should try to reconcile with other people within God's family, the church. And Jesus said how important it was to deal with sin wisely and compassionately and to try to restore relationships that are broken. And Peter then pipes up and asks a question. He says, Lord, how many times should I forgive? If my brother or sister sins against me, how many times should I forgive them? And he comes up with a suggestion. 
Should I forgive them seven times? Jesus answers, not seven times, but 77 times. And in fact, when you read that, when you look in the Bible, you might find that there's a little footnote, and it says that that could be translated 70 times seven. So not just 77, but 70 times seven, which is, where are the mathematicians? What's 70 times seven? What's seven times seven? Go on. Well, so 70 times seven, go on. 490. Indeed it is. Quite right. Um, well taught. 490. Now, Jesus isn't saying here, really, just a number of times to forgive. So he's not saying count up all the sins that somebody does against you, and if they hit 491, then you don't have to forgive them anymore. What he's saying is keep on forgiving. Don't stop. Forgive as many times as you're sinned against. Now, that's very difficult, isn't it? And you think, why would we do that? Why would I forgive without limit? And Jesus gives a reason. And he, you could sum it up, really, by saying, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And he tells this parable to illustrate that. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So in this story, there's this man who uh, owes the king a huge amount of money. It says 10,000 bags of gold or 10,000 talents. Literally, now a talent uh, in those days was a unit of measurement, it was a unit of weight. So if you had one talent of weight, it was about 35 kilograms, okay? Or about five stone, five and a half stone, okay? So my weight, I, so in the old days, I would have been two talents in weight approximately and a little bit more. So, the, uh, so imagine you had 10,000 talents of gold. It's tons and tons of gold. It's the equivalent of billions of euros that this man somehow owed the king. I suppose it can only have been that it was the king's own fortune that he had somehow lost. And so, of course, he stands for you and me. Because in the Bible, sin is pictured sometimes as a debt that we owe. Because we should love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And when we fail to do that, it's like we're accumulating a debt that we owe to God. And we cannot ever pay it back. That's the point in this story. How could this man ever find uh, thousands of kilograms of, of gold, tons of gold to pay the king back? He couldn't. But wonderfully, in the story, when he asks for mercy, the king cancels out the debt. He says, you don't have to pay that anymore. I will pay. I will cover it instead. And of course, it's a picture of how the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the debt we owe. He died to forgive and cancel out our sins. Wonderful, free grace that he gives. And so this man in the story leaves the king's palace free. The burden has been taken away. The debt has been canceled. He should go home now and live happily ever after. Should be the end of the story. But it's not. Because the story continues and Jesus says, On the way home, the man met another servant who owed him 100 silver coins. Now, uh, the coin that's been talked about there is called a denarius. And it was typically a day's wage. So this man owes what we might say today would be a few thousand. So it's not nothing, but it's not billions either. And what does the servant do? The one who's just been forgiven a debt of billions of euros. What does he do to this other guy who owes him a little bit of money? He grabs him and he starts to choke him and he says, pay me back everything you owe. It's quite shocking, isn't it? It's supposed to be a kind of a shocking story because the king's kindness has had no impact on his heart. All that debt that he was forgiven hasn't led him to show forgiveness to others. 
And in fact, the story ends with the man being thrown back in jail because the king says, if you don't forgive others, then I won't forgive you. Jesus finishes, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So there's a huge challenge here. God is calling us to forgive other people. And he's calling us to do it because he has forgiven us. If we put our faith and trust in Jesus, then our huge debt is wiped clean. So we need to forgive the small debts that others owe. It's very hard, isn't it? One of the questions that we often wonder is, what if the person isn't even sorry? What if the person who's done something against me hasn't even apologized? Do I need to forgive them then? And I think what the Lord would say is that, yes, we need to be willing to forgive, even when there's not repentance from the other person. Now, probably the relationship won't be fixed until the other person is able to say sorry. But we need to be willing to let those things go. Otherwise, resentment builds up within us. Otherwise, it harms us as well when we let that thing that has been done to us be there inside our head. We need to let it go. We need to say, the Lord has forgiven me so much, I will not hold a grudge against another person. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Think of all the debts of ours that have been canceled by God. Think of how, as the psalm said, he's taken our sins away from us as far as the east is from the west. Think of how he suffered on the cross so that we could be released and then we can offer mercy to others. We're going to think about the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus as we listen to the second of our songs, which is going to be played now uh, for us. And it, this, this song is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And it's just a reflection on what the Lord did for us upon the cross and the difference that that makes in our lives. Death. 
turn to the Lord in prayer now, and uh, we're going to use some words which will again come up um, on our screen. So uh, we're going to use some responses which may be familiar to us as we respond to God's Word together. So let's pop them up. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Let us continue to pray as we seek God's blessing and help at this time. We want to pray, first of all, for the grace to forgive when that is necessary. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have forgiven us so much. We pray that you would pour your Spirit into our hearts and that we would be forgiving towards others. We pray for all who find it hard to forgive. We remember victims of injustice, violence, and oppression remember those who have suffered as a result of crime and disorder. We think of all who feel themselves to have in any way been unjustly treated. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would grow peace and justice across your world, and that through the reconciling and forgiving power of the gospel, you would transform nations, communities, and families. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the ongoing work of our church and of our parish. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all ages and stages of life. We pray for our young people. We pray particularly for those who have recently received results from leaving certificate or offers from colleges. We pray that you would guide them in their future life. We pray for those who are at school that you would give them safety, patience, and good learning. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are older and those who are unable to be here. We pray for all who are ill. We continue to seek your blessing upon them. We continue to remember Raymond McGuire. We continue to remember all who are in hospital. We remember Eileen Hood in our nursing home at Mullinus Soul. We pray for all who need the grace and strengthening of God's hand at this time. We also pray, Heavenly Father, for our ongoing work of ministry and outreach, for the mustard seed, for our Alpha course, for our different Bible study groups. And we pray on this Sunday for those who are being called into the ministry of your church. And we remember Ian McAlevey, who will be ordained a priest in the Church of Ireland Uh, parish of Glendermott in Derry this evening. We remember Andrew, our bishop, and all who have authority over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer as we gather up all our thoughts, all our thanks, and all our needs as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we're going to finish off our service by saying the Apostles' Creed which is also going to appear up here on page 112 of the prayer book, and we're going to affirm our faith. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we recall the great truths on which we base our lives and faith. I believe 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Just before I say that final blessing, I want to thank you again for being here. To remind you, uh, as you know very well now, the plate for the collections is down by the door. Uh, to remind you to get in touch with me if you're not receiving the parish update and you want to. And let's finish by praying for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, and we'll meet again soon. Thank you. Thanks for all the lovely messages. Keep well, stay safe, and we'll chat again soon. God bless.